Hey everyone, Jack from Space Games on YouTube here. CitizenCon has come and gone. And honestly, I'm still trying to wrap my head around all the incredible stuff we witnessed live on Twitch from Los Angeles last weekend. Two full days of information, mind-blowing trailers and breathtaking concept art. It's safe to say that my mind was thoroughly blown. I've been diving back into the entire event, dissecting 12 hours of panels and their accompanying presentations. I've carefully crafted scripts from the audio and zeroed in on the 10 most pivotal and accelerating features that were unveiled. So without further ado, let's kick off our list with number 10. In my opinion, the dazzling new water FX and incredible water animations was something we have to mention here. New water effects. The first major upgrade is the transition from deferred shading to forward shading for water shaders. The shift allows for more realistic water rendering. It introduces proper lighting, reflection and refraction effects, which enhance the overall visual quality. Now objects under the water are accurately lit. And we even have realistic lighting changes on the water surface due to specular highlights and suspended particles. What's more, they've integrated the atmosphere into the water lighting setup, providing a more cohesive and realistic look. The introduction of Wavecrest backlight scattering is a game changer. As you gaze at the waves, you'll notice how the sun's rays interact with the suspended particles, creating a mesmerizing effect. But that's not all. The team has focused on creating highly detailed foam rendering with both surface and subsurface foam. From a distance, you can see how foam and bubbles interact with the water, adding the visual splendor. The developers didn't stop there. They've introduced a groundbreaking water surface simulation that's influenced by physics and various in-game factors. This means that everything from walking through puddles to firing bullets creates accurate ripples and waves in the water. It's a level of realism we've all been waiting for. So there you have it folks, the water FX changes in Star Citizen. It's a visual marvel and adds an extra layer of immersion to the game. The dedication of the development team shines through in these updates. We are in for a real treat when these changes are implemented. The Dusters Gang The Dusters Gang was revealed and their armor isn't just any armor. It's the emblem of a notorious criminal gang, specializing in mining related shenanigans. The design journey for the Duster started with a deep appreciation for the original Desert Nomad armor, which became the foundation for the Duster design language. As a player, your journey with Duster involves both horizontal and vertical progression. You shape your role and playstyle as you progress, and the rareness of your armor will signify your achievements. A common bounty hunter's armor set will pale in comparison to the legendary ones, and acquiring the strongest armor will require taking on the game's toughest challenges and building your reputation. The armor sets will be more diverse, with light, medium and heavy categories, each offering different blends of protection and mobility. And the new armor categories like Combat, Specialist, Utility and Support will open up exciting gameplay possibilities. But remember, stepping out of your designated role might present challenges. For instance, using a heavy armor set while piloting a nimble fighter could lead to restricted visibility and decreased vehicle control. So it's crucial to choose wisely based on your role and situation. The Duster armor is set to revolutionize your Star Citizen experience, offering new layers of strategy and excitement. The galaxy awaits, so are you ready to embrace your criminal persona? Or explore the verse in style with Duster? I certainly am. Scanwave. All right, let's talk about the scan wave. Right now, there are two primary methods for scanning, the scan and the ping system. But get ready, because they are merging into one supercharged system called the scan wave. When you send out a scan wave and it successfully pings, 
your HUD instantly lights up with a detailed AR marker, revealing more than just a ship's name. You'll have access to a treasure trove of intriguing data. The scan wave comes in two flavors, the quick scan and the charge scan. The quick scan is perfect for staying covert, offering a small passive detection range boost and the ability to spot faint objects. On the flip side, the charge scan is the big one. It can detect objects up to quantum boost range, even providing jump markers. But it's not just about finding things. The scan wave offers crucial insights. You'll know if a ship's charging its quantum drive, firing or even generating shields. With this wealth of info, you'll make informed decisions and whether to approach a scan location. The new Biotic Corp character tool. Biotic Corp is a game-changing character creation tool that's going to blow your mind. They've taken the character creation process to a whole new level, introducing the sculpting mode. Gone are the days of fumbling through a list of preset heads and struggling with planning options. This system is intuitive, fast and incredible user-friendly. Imagine sculpting your character's facial features with ease. Adjust the nose, lips, brow and even the eyes to achieve the perfect look. And yes, you can finally create those almond eyes you've always dreamed of. With sculpting mode, you have the freedom to craft your character's appearance down to the finest detail. But the innovation doesn't stop there. The tool lets you explore a wide range of skin tones. Forget about static presets. Now you can fine tune the melanin and hemoglobin levels for a truly unique complexion. Texture options are also a game changer, with 30 variations available for each body type. Want that weathered look? You got it. Plus, they've added a makeup layer that's inclusive for all body types, opening up a world of cosmetic possibilities. The team behind this tool has thought of everything. You can choose to add freckles or sunspots, giving your character a distinctive appearance. The options are virtually limitless, and this is just the beginning. And here's the kicker. You can save and share your character. That's right. Your painstakingly created avatars can be stored for future use. No more recreating your favorite look every time you play. There's so much to explore with the new character creation tool. From funky colors to intricate details. It's time for you to express yourself and make your mark in the Star Citizen universe. I hope you are as excited about this as I am and I can't wait to see the incredible characters you all come up with. New Mobiglass and Star Maps. The developers have introduced the new Mobiglass and a brand new cartography system that's going to revolutionize how we explore the vast regions of space. First up, the upgraded Mobiglass is a sleek and high-tech wrist-mounted device that is your go-to tool for navigating the star system universe. It's like having a computer on your wrist, allowing you to access maps, track your location and interact with various elements in the game. The best part? It's all real-time in-game tech. No pre-baked cinematics, just pure immersion. On the other hand, the new cartography system is equally impressive. With the star map, players can now explore a galaxy full of star systems, each with its own destinations and routes. What's so cool is that you can download maps to your Mobiglass, and they can be updated incrementally as you explore. And if you're ever unsure about your position, there's a beacon system that helps you triangulate your location, even for other players in the game. The radar and scanner technologies are a game changer for exploration. Imagine being able to pinpoint objects of interest in real time, whether you are in spaceship or on foot. It adds a whole new layer of immersion to the game. What's more, you can use it to track other players, and they can jam the signal to maintain privacy, creating a dynamic element of gameplay. In a universe as vast as Star Citizens, the Mobiglass and Cartography system are essential tools for any spacefarer. They're immersive, user-friendly and add depth to your exploration experiences. I can't wait to see the systems will shape the way we play Star Citizen. So if you're a fan of space exploration, like I am, you're in for a treat. These advancements bring us one step closer to a fully realized science fiction universe. The Engineering Crew Gameplay 
The next most important feature for Star Citizen is the engineering crew gameplay. Guillermo Bobao, a talented gameplay programmer, took the stage who talked about a groundbreaking resource network system. This new system is set to replace the previous pipe system, offering a more generalized, versatile and expensive approach. It's designed to have a global impact across ships, outposts and even tie into the cargo system. One of the main aspects of this system is how it connects different items, both on your ship and within containers. You'll notice this making a significant impact in engineering gameplay, but it won't stop there. Resource network functionality will extend to various other gameplay aspects, including missions and outpost management. Now, diving deeper into the exciting engineering gameplay, Thorsten Lyman, lead system designer, outlined three key activities for crew members. Whether aboard ships or managing outposts, tuning, maintaining and managing your ship. Each of these three responsibilities requires distinct skills and tools, giving you the option to decide whether to delegate or handle them yourself. Among these activities, tuning involves optimizing your ship's items for your journey, adjusting power settings and more. You can even exchange sub-items or remove items from sockets to repair your ship as needed. Maintaining, on the other hand, is all about damage control and ensuring your ship's items remain in top condition. Think of it as playing the role of a mechanic, where you may need to remove dust, apply oil or perform other maintenance tasks to reduce wear and tear. In engineering gameplay, you'll be able to repair components like power plants, shown vividly in the gameplay session. And you even have the option to replace damaged parts with spare ones scavenged from other ships. A great example of resource management in action. Additionally, you'll be able to control your ship's environment, with the ability to open and close doors, and even adjust your ship's atmosphere. This newfound level of control will also offer better management of your ship's power distribution. As for energy balance, a significant shift is happening, especially with larger ships. They no longer consume less energy than they produce, meaning you have to make decisions about ship's systems to power, creating a whole new layer of strategy. But that's not all. Batteries are being introduced, allowing you to briefly bolster your ship's power in emergency situations. Recharging these batteries will be essential, and you'll need to allocate power from your power plant to do so. And lastly, there are malfunctions. These issues include fires and more complex misfires, adding an element of challenge to the gameplay. You can counter these problems by suffocating fires, repairing items, or simply turning items off and on. In conclusion, the future of Star Citizen is looking incredibly dynamic and engaging. The technology behind these systems will make multi-crew gameplay more meaningful promising an ever-evolving universe to explore. Maelstrom. Physical damage to buildings and other objects. The folks behind Star Citizen have also unveiled something truly groundbreaking. Maelstrom, their latest addition to their game's development toolkit. This is a remarkable feature and technology that Maelstrom brings to the table. Maelstrom is no ordinary development tool. It's a physically based destruction system. Think about it. A system that allows you to simulate destruction and damage as realistically as possible. This system ensures that when a wing is shot off of a spaceship, that for example the missiles and weapons on that wing will still remain attached and intact, adding a new level of immersion for players. The days of using point pools or abstract damage models are over. With Maelstrom, damage is calculated based on a physical model and the properties of each entity making the game more intuitive for players. The result? Realistic, dynamic damage that enhances your gameplay experiences. What sets Maelstrom apart is its persistence and networking readiness. It's designed to perform efficiently even under high latency situations, ensuring that the destruction and damage you see are not only realistic, but also synchronized across different players, making the universe of Star Citizen more immersive than ever. To ensure that destruction is as realistic as possible, Maelstrom employs breakable clusters. These clusters include sets of physical geometry, visual geometry and entities that can break off. 
This hierarchy system helps model stress and strain in the game, making damage and destruction more believable. Whether you're an avid player or a fan of cutting-edge game development, this system is undoubtedly something to be excited about. Persistent hangers and freight elevators. In the exciting world of Star Citizen, hangers are undergoing a transformation. These spaces are becoming more than just places to park your ships. They are becoming your personal sanctuaries. Imagine a place where your inventory and storage needs are at your fingertips, where your ships are easily accessible right from your hangar. Freight elevators will be your new best friends, allowing you to interact with your local inventory effortlessly. With the click of a button, items stored in your location will be brought up in a physical state, ready for your command, all managed through a dedicated interface screen. It's a game changer. But the best part? You no longer need to traverse the vast universe to fetch your ground vehicles. Your hangar will be your hub, where ship components are easily accessed and you can customize your ships with ease. The dream of persistent player hangers and freight elevators is soon reality. Get ready to make your hangar your own, your home away from home. It's a new era for a star citizen and it's very cool. Server meshing and replication layer. Now, let's talk about server meshing. CIG showcased a groundbreaking development in server technology known as server meshing. Paul Reindl, the director for online technology, took the stage to provide an in-depth look at how this new system works and the potential it holds for the game. Paul kicked things off with a live demonstration of persistent entity streaming and the replication layer. Rather than relying on slides or pre-recorded videos, he showed us how it all works in real time. The demo started with Paul joining a server and we witnessed everything streaming in as his client connected. It's impressive to see how seamlessly the game handled the transition between different zones, even as Paul walked between them. This unique zone system with distinct coordinate systems and physical grids allows for a smooth transition between areas, whether it's a ship, empty space, a space station or a planet. One of the key takeaways was the emphasis on persistent entities. The game can dynamically create and stream thousands of entities in real time, including characters with customizations, vehicles and more. The system can handle an enormous number of dynamic entities, even reaching millions after weeks of gameplay. The streaming technology itself is a standout feature going beyond the standard texture or geometry streaming by allowing entire entities to stream in and out. But that wasn't all. Paul introduced us to the next exciting piece of tech, the replication layer split. In a live demo, he showed how the client and server are no longer directly connected but communicate through a new replication service. The service's primary role is to manage entity replication. And it's what keeps the game connected even when the main server experiences hiccups. If the server goes down, the game isn't interrupted as the replication service restores the state, offering a seamless experience. Then came the showstopper, server meshing. Paul ran a live test with multiple servers connected to a replication layer, effectively demonstrating the foundations of a working server mesh. This technology allows players to seamlessly transition between servers, maintaining entity interaction between different zones. Whether it's shooting entities or interacting with different zones, this tech is a game changer. The team has put tremendous amount of effort into developing these technologies. And it's clear that this is a monumental step forward for Star Citizen. Server meshing is no longer a distant dream it's becoming a reality. This feature will allow for massive, persistent and dynamic worlds. And it's a testament to the dedication of the development team. In conclusion, the presentation by Paul Reindl showcased the remarkable strides made in Star Citizen's technology, particularly in the areas of server meshing and entity streaming. The future looks incredibly promising for the game. And it's exciting to see such ambitious and groundbreaking tech in the world of MMO gaming. Base building. 
And my personal number one, base building. The biggest one in my opinion. The developers believe that base building is the future of Star Citizen. And I believe the same. It's the result of various game systems coming together. It's all about creating your own home or trading post, gathering resources or going completely off-grid. It's a game of planning and preparation. The process begins with blueprints, which are used to fabricate everything in the game. You can acquire these blueprints through missions, reputation rewards or by encountering rare NPCs. The materials you need range from common to ultra rare and you need to explore the universe to find them. Base building isn't just about what you build, but also where you build it. You can choose between high security, low security or lawless zones. Each comes with its own advantages and risks, including taxes, protection fees and more. To cater to different playstyles, you can create buildings of various sizes, from small to extra large. The surveyor tool allows you to build small structures, while vehicles can create medium ones. Large structures can be constructed using ships like the Pioneer, which can also serve as a mobile base. The developers emphasize player-driven gameplay, and this feature truly opens up endless possibilities. You can trade, share, compete and much more. Whether you are a solo player or a part of an organization, base building is set to revolutionize your experience. With drone gameplay, you can strategically place your buildings, explore resources beneath the surface and connect power generators. The physicalized nature of the game ensures that the quality of what you build depends on the materials used. Lastly, you can personalize your base with furnishings, decorations and more. And here's the kicker, you can build your own ships. That's right, it's a game changer. So there you have it folks. Base building in Star Citizen is still in concept phase and it's clear that the developers have put a lot of thought into creating a feature that's both immersive and dynamic. It's an exciting step towards making Star Citizen the ultimate player-driven universe. So that's it, my top 10 new features introduced by Cloud Imperium Games during CitizenCon 2953. Let me know if you missed a new feature. What is your favorite feature? Do you think we will see most of it in game by the end of next year? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you thought I did a great job making this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, live gameplay and more adventures in the verse, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is absolutely free and helps to support our community to grow. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the verse. This is Jack Long, signing off.